Hi. Um, I can press this, my slide will come up. Um, it's nice to be on this stage, um, and it's an honor to be able to share um, really much more exposing of myself than making a dance. So I'm going to keep trying to share as much as I can in this short time um, so you can see um, the inner workings of an artist and hopefully take something home with you from this. I did major in math. I was trying to escape being an artist. I just thought, I just, I grew up a ballet dancer and I was like, I can't. Boston School Ballet summer program was sort of the end of the road for me. Oh, I just needed something that allowed more freedom and creativity, so I thought school. <laughs> My parents were shocked. They were like, uh, we didn't know you were smart. And they didn't mean that in a bad way, but they were like, <laughs> So I did, I got into college, one of the best, and it was basically I wanted to get out of the Midwest, out of the, uh, you know, the basement art studio, um, Pink Floyd, people chewing tobacco, you know, it was a great place to go to school, but it was like, I think I need to be somewhere else. And I decided that I would uh, major in math, um, which seems weird, but my dad is a mathematician and it came quite easily to me. Um, and pi is something that I drew in this uh, performance. I've, I've taught high school, and it was the first time that I drew pi in a performance. And uh, pi is an ancient concept. Um, in the Western world, it um, goes back to the Old Testament. So just uh, you take a circle and you walk around the circle. That's going around a circle once, going across is the diameter. So the ratio between the circle and the diameter is pi. We can't approximate it. It's just, uh, I mean, we can, we can only approximate that. I mean, it it's, goes on forever and ever, and I'm sure you guys know that. It's no pattern um, to it. And um, I think about that, I, I guess, well, I was using that particularly in a calculus equation because I was talking about the volume of my throat, and then I poured water down my throat, so it was like a performance art piece. Um, <laughs> and, um, but I try to map in my dances the heart. So I have the brain, which is watching something else, but the human heart is um, something that's very difficult to describe. It's something that motivates us. It's what, it's what get, gets us up. It's what makes our life go forward. It what makes your life go into chaos. It's what is everything. And I think choreographers maybe try to map the human heart, um, and I use math as well. Um, this is... Um, that morning, just to tell you the mundaneness of this image, um, my uh, six year old, five year old, he was five at the time, drew a big, cut out a big red heart, and it was just a great piece of work, and he was holding it, it was ab above his body and bigger than his body, and he was standing back, and I was like, that's just a great image, can I take that? And he was like, no. <laughs> so I had to draw my own, and it wasn't as good, it was more perfect, it was more studied, it was more, you know, refined, and it didn't have that freedom that he has at this point in his art making. I brought it to the shoot, which was on Valentine's Day, um, and we were like, okay, let's go up and down this hill, and we're going to dance, and at one point, I took this heart and threw it on the hill, and Ezra stomped on it. He's been in my company for seven years, so we can kind of do stuff um, <laughs> freely and not talk about it. And then I put it in my shirt, and he pulled it out. And that was, um, came later on stage in that form. And it was the very end of this dance. We did um, perform it here on this stage as well. We, it was a big hit in Seattle at Northwest New Works at On the Boards, where I performed a lot as well. And then it was such a good image that I was working um, in the Ramayana as the choreographer at Act Theater, and they used that image. Both the directors came and used that image. You know, when Sharpanika gets her nose cut off, then that all of a sudden it was like, she bled. <laughs> so it's just, uh, you know, we have something good. It's, uni it's universal. It appeals to people. It has a, a, a weight to it and a, uh, what, do you, what is that? Just you feel it, you know? So I'm interested in that as, a, as an artist. I'm always looking for that. Um, this was um, um, the uncertainty of being human. It's a section called Cry Push. And I ended up pushing Ezra across stage while I was crying. And he kept doing the same movement that was very predictable. And I just like cried and pushed him over. So I was working with predictability. And what I thought was, you know, he was in this predictable state and I was unpredictable. And we were colliding. 
And in the end, I um, just got so, whatever, I cried enough, I pushed that image to its limit, and I cried in my bag. Um, <laughs> which I think most people can relate to, you know? It's like, <laughs> you've done enough, you know? And I cried in the bag, and then there was flowers that I found, and that led into the next section. And that was, um, you know, life just keeps pushing back at you. It's, it's unpredictable. You can't map it with straight ma math that we're, at least we're doing. I mean, we don't talk a lot about pi. We talk about numbers and, you know, uh, probability. And if the market does this, the market does this. And this is the math that we know and learn about. But to me, math is a, is a mystical thing. It's a tool. It has forever been used to describe the human condition, the human heart, and our lives. And yet there's so many limitations with it. But I love both fields equally, and I'm actually not, I'm a working choreographer, I'm a trained choreographer, only through work. I never took a class, in, I took one class in choreography, and I, I don't think I was quite good. The teacher didn't think I was really cool or something. And, um, but I was, you know, brought up a dancer. I was a very strict, you know, training and, yeah. So here I am. <laughs> and that image um, is quite powerful. And uh, I feel like it's, it's good to um, talk about where things come from as artists. Because I think there's this idea that you know, we're drawing from a lot of inspiration. But I don't feel like that. I feel like it's, uh, it's mundane. But it's beautiful. And the beautiful is mundane, which is transcendent in a certain way, I think. Um, so, you know, my husband was doing this step to this Hawaiian music that we got on our uh, anniversary, or our wedding, honeymoon. And um, Ezra, who's a, also a ballet dancer like me, um, was working with me on this section, and I was like, can you just do this simple step? Because I thought it was so beautiful and so simple, you know? And, um, and then his um, girlfriend who designed those costumes was at the... Um, at the shoot and noticed there's patterns of lipstick that were all over him and me from the rolling down the hill and stomping out the heart. So she drew a mask around his face in lipstick as a drawing. And I was like, that's a great image. So let's just put both of those together. And um, I tried to make a piece that was universal, um, that even though we're male and female, just would apply to some sort of universal pairing between people and, and colliding of psyches and, and bodies and spirits. And um, in order to show what Ezra was, was the universal male, he um, went to the back of the stage and it just went like this. <laughs> and uh, I, that came from my three-year-old who was in the bathtub with me. And I thought, what is a universal male? You know, how do they just... And I realized that that just, that's him. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I, you know, it was, I, I, I called my designer and I was like, can you make a, um, I'll just call it a lingam. <laughs> can you make a, uh, you know, felted thing with water in it? And she was like, I can't, she'll never forget that message. <laughs> and she was like, yes, this is why I'm working with Maureen. <laughs> so she did. And it, and it was a, it, it just was working with these different images that, you know, are universal, but come from the mundane parts of our lives, the, the, uh, the humorous parts. So I, I'm, anyway, circle. So I'm running in a circle after I, whatever, the bag, and then I come to him and dance. So um, that is um, art and architecture. And I'm interested in showing the slide to you guys because um, it's a beautiful image. You know, there's this tree and there's this body and she's in this position and it's kind of mapping the tree. But what's beautiful to me is what happened before, which was chaos. I had this tree on stage and for some reason I was like, I'm in this little s studio. It's a great dance center um, in Seattle and uh, we're like moving this tree through time because I was interested in like this idea of like we think time is linear, but meanwhile all these variables are coming and they're imposing themselves, people, um, states, whatever. And I'm underneath the tree and the tree is going in somewhat a predictable manner. And then at a certain point, um, one of the dancers lifts the tree off me and 
This is the next, this is the scene before that, and swings it around, and that's the dancer, and then I lift the other part, and I crash it, knocking the sticks off another dancer. And I just felt like life is destructive. And in stage, often it's, like, it's so beautiful, and I'm like, well, what does that have to do with my life? You know, it, there's a feeling of sudden chaos and, and danger that I try to get across and tried to get across in this piece. Um, and the tree was swung quite high, and we almost knocked out a light. And I wasn't interested. People are like, you're really wild. I'm like, life is wild. You know, things happen. And I'm, you know, I've had a life. I've, you know, married and two kids, and sudden, suddenly things happen, you know? I mean, we got in a car accident two years ago, out of nowhere, on our fifth anniversary in Mexico. You know? And then the beauty that I saw after that, after we were all alive, you know? There's nothing better than realizing you're alive and, you know, the smile of my child or, okay, we're all together and, you know, so it's, I, you know, and people say I'm courageous. I don't feel like I'm courageous. I'm just honest, <laughs> trying to be. Um, this is um, people breathing on stage together in the same piece after the tree sw swung around and after the beauty happened. And I was like, I hired a mass of people. I had two months to make the piece and people just <laughs> all these different bodies breathing together. And I was like, I need people to see that, this beauty of humanity. How can I get that on stage? Not the, not the perfect, but the human, because that is so beautiful. And we did it. <laughs> and I was quite proud of it. And um, at the end of the piece, there's, th I call it three iterations of the tree. And um, I take the third little twig and I put it on my heart and the trees drop. And that's the end. This is um, me working in image. I mean, it's not me, but there's a dancer there um, and another performer and they're running up and down a log because I had the image. That's the funny thing about like, you know, you have an image and all of a sudden you have to be responsible. You're like, can you run up and down that tree in the cold? <laughs> You know, it's like crazy, you know, and people are like, yeah, let's do it, let's feel it, let's, let's do it. And I get to do that. <laughs> and this other dancer standing on a tree. So there's a human and the tree in our environment. And being in the Northwest, I'm like, you know, there's me and the tree. <laughs> Art is a lot of hard work. You know, people, they're, you know, this Grotowski quote was like, it's not about talent, it's about lack of talent and perseverance and hard work. And so I'm like, I'm thinking like, wow, I got to the tree, here I am, I'm doing the shoot, this piece is gonna happen. I'm not thinking anything profound at all, except for like, I'm here, this tree, it feels right, we're gonna do it, we're gonna get this tree in the dance studio. It doesn't sound like a big deal, you know, but when you're working with very little budget and a bunch of people, you know, getting a tree to break apart live in a dance studio and have it be about humans and not about the tree, you know, is about consciousness and people coming together. And um, in the end, it's just uh, me by myself <laughs> again, you know. And I get to, um, at first when I made the decision to be an artist, after being good in mathematics, it was terrifying. It's just scary. I think it's scary sometimes because we are all so big, all of us, every single one of us, every single speaker that's come on, and will come on, and all of you, we are larger than what we can comprehend. And, um, and then to have to be responsible to that and other people around you, because you have the desire to express it, you know, it's come to me simply as a desire to give. I want to give something to people, you know, and somehow I felt like I could do that more through art than through math. If I had a choice, I would probably be my, by myself in a little room, but my soul needed to do this thing. And when I finish making something good, it's, um, it's complete. And I feel like I've, I don't know, it's like a release. <laughs> like going to the bathroom, like something simple. <laughs> like I've done it, you know? And it's not, I don't feel the high anymore. I feel like I gave something to people, which is really exciting. Um, that's Fibonacci spiral. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle was what I'm thinking about now. Um, and that, at the same time, this uh, famous um, Argentinian poet said, life is as real and as bizarre as it is, and we try to put things on it to predict it and contain it. Math is art, 
Art is wild, life is wild, and I make art. <laughs>